It's time for a new series. We're gonna be talking about security systems and not just any security system. If you've watched our basics of a smart home, you already have a fully functioning smart home. So what we're gonna be doing is not just building any security system, we're gonna be building a smart security system. As I mentioned in the intro, we're going to be building upon the basics of a smart home. If you haven't taken the time, go ahead and watch from the very beginning my playlist and series on how to build a smart home so you can have all of the devices necessary to have a fully functioning smart home. And then from there, we're going to build upon it so that you can protect one of your largest investments. We're going to protect one of the largest investments you'll ever make in your lifetime, your family and your home because nothing is more important to us than our family and our protection. The reason why I encourage you to go watch the original series is because with a smart security system, we're actually gonna be building upon what we've already done. Some of the devices that you've already purchased are gonna be able to double as home automation devices as well as security devices. And I've mentioned them in some of their breakdown videos. So I'm not gonna go too far into those devices as we continue forward, but I still would love it if you've already got them and if not, not, now's a great time to go back and watch those videos specifically. I'll mention them as we go along. So maybe either continue this video or go back, watch it all from the beginning with the basics of a smart home. Before we dive into it, I want to mention my next video is going to be hinted at somewhere along the lines of this video. So make sure you watch the entire thing so you can see what's coming next. A few disclaimers before we dive further is this is ever evolving. Smart homes are always changing and we're always finding new things that we can do or change or things that we want to automate. Keep in mind you don't have to buy everything up front and you can buy bits and pieces as you go along. Analyze and determine what's most important for you in the beginning. Purchase those ones and then determine the next steps as to which ones you're going to want. Next, even my own smart home hasn't been fully built out. I'm still planning and deciding and analyzing what I do want next. Prices are always changing on devices. I remember there was a time where motion sensors were 30 or $40. Now you can get them for 10 or 15 bucks a pop. So it's worth it to keep an eye out for devices. Look for things when they go on sale. Don't be afraid to not buy everything all at once. I know it's a large investment in your home for a smart security system. Now, what exactly differentiates a security system from a smart one. Well, there's a few different things that we can talk about here. The first step when deciding that you want a home security is determining whether you want to go with a company, something like Vivint, Simply Safe, Cove, or ADT. These are ones that have pre-packaged home security systems. You say, this is what I want. These are the doors I'm covering. These are the windows that I'm covering. This is the size of my home. And they're going to build out the package for you. Some of these companies offer free installation or charge you for installation, while other ones are just going to say, here's the devices, go ahead and install them yourselves. There's two different options you can go there. We're going to be breaking down in the next video what exactly is the best route for you. So stay tuned for next week's video when I dive farther into the differences and the pros and cons between going the company route and going the DIY route, which is the other option for you. You can go DIY and build out the individual devices for you so you can allow them to be not only smart home devices, but home security devices as well. These are things like your doorbell cameras, your motion sensors, your contact sensors, your smoke alarms, your leak sensors. These are all home security devices that can double as not just for security, but also just for strictly home automation. The next video is going to be on the pros and cons between going the DIY route or the company prepackaged route. So how again is there a difference between a smart security and a regular security system? Personally, I believe the company route isn't quite a smart security system. It's just a security system. It's a standalone device or devices that work cohesively together. But when you go that DIY route, like we all like to do here, kind of probably watching this because you're a DIYer just like I am, you're going to find that you can do more with your smart security system. It is going to take a little bit more time. It can be a little bit more difficult because you have to spend more time analyzing 
testing and determining which devices are going to work together for you. But in the end, you're going to have a lot more of an intuitive style home and a lot more fun along the process of learning how your home works. And you're going to have a device and system unique to your own home and your own situation. Whether or not you decide to go company prepackaged or DIY, you're still going to need to look at what devices are coming along with it and what devices you should even be caring about when purchasing a security system. I've had one from the prepackaged companies before, as well as I've started building out my own home security DIY. And personally, I've found DIY is the way to go. I'm going to give you some information in the next video as to the company route and what works for you. But first, let's break down which devices you should be looking at and which devices are actually considered in building out a smart security system. Each of these devices is going to have their own individual video. A couple of them along the way might not have them because I've already done those videos. I want you to go back and watch some of my previous ones and I'll mention those devices when we get there because I take a few moments and I do mention that those devices can be used for security purposes. I'll basically bundle them together with some other ones to mention how you should be purchasing them and when you should be purchasing them. Now some of these devices that you should be looking at are doorbells, smart locks, your full-blown alarm system which is the keypad or touchscreen device that gives you the capability to lock or unlock your home or in this case arm or disarm your home. You should be looking at contact sensors which I made a video on those ones already. You should then be looking at motion sensors. After motion sensors and this one gets pretty expensive so you could be purchasing this as one of the first ones or one of the last devices but those are cameras both interior and exterior cameras. Some people are a little weirded out with interior cameras and motion sensors can double as your interior camera so you can see inside your home without actually physically seeing inside your home. I strongly encourage you to have both. Having that video record of what happens inside your home is very, very important. A couple bonus devices that people don't always consider when building a security system is a garage door opener. I covered this in my last video, which was a bonus device when building out a basic smart home was a smart garage door opener. The reason why is this could be utilized with a contact sensor because you can determine whether that garage door is open or closed. But the ability to actually open and close that garage door remotely is far more powerful and important. And it gives you that same contact sensor capability. You can see from that app whether the garage door is open or closed for you. If it's open or closed, you can do the opposite. Close it if you need to or open it if you need to. The two other devices that you should be considering with home security and home monitoring are smoke detectors and CO detectors. Not CO2 detectors, like I mentioned and messed up super badly in my last video and I had somebody comment about, oh, it's a CO detector, not a CO2. You would think with all the planning that went into it, I would have caught that detail and somehow it still slipped my mind. So it's a CO detector, carbon monoxide detector that you're looking for. These work as well for home monitoring. And then the last one are leak sensors. I've covered all of those devices smart garage door openers, smoke detectors, CO detectors, all in my last video. Take a moment, go watch it if you're curious about learning more about those devices. Otherwise, wait till we get to that portion in our mapping out the roadmap for when you're purchasing what for your security system. But please take a moment, watch that video, you'll learn a lot. One other bonus device that you could be purchasing, and this goes along with your alarm pad. So if you don't get the alarm pad or it doesn't come with one, you could purchase little key fobs, have the ability to remotely arm or disarm your home. Now, honestly, the app can do this. So this isn't a super important device. Sometimes it's nice because it's on your keys. You don't have to really fumble with getting your phone out or anything like that. But again, you know, most alarm systems have a moment after you enter the home that you can disarm the alarm system. To roll it back real quick, the devices that you should be considering, and not necessarily this order, but I strongly encourage you to go in this order, are doorbells, door locks, the alarm system itself, whether it be a keypad or touchscreen, contact sensors, motion sensors, cameras, which also could be moved up to the higher portion of the list if you so choose, garage door openers, and then smoke detectors along with CO detectors. And then also with those other detectors, we have leak sensors. As I said, you don't have to buy them in this order. This is just the order that people most find 
works the best for building out your home. The first device, one that's most common with people when it comes to getting one, is the doorbell camera. So many people want a video doorbell camera. I love one. We all like to see who's coming to our door. We want the ability to talk to them when they're at our door, whether it be Amazon Prime, just a regular delivery man, or maybe you've got the Grubhub subscription, or you've got DoorDash coming. We all want the ability to talk to somebody. So doorbells are one of the biggest and first devices that people should be looking at because it gives you the ability to talk to people and see who's at your door. So it's kind of a combination package deal because you're going to get a smart home device as well as security seeing who's at the front door and they cover a very wide range of area. Door locks are one of the most simple ways to add security to your home because you have the ability through an app to track whether your door is unlocked or locked. These can get pretty expensive depending on which ones you get. You can add them to every single exterior door in your home. Home. And again, like I said, it's so easy through an app or even through automations by setting a specific time when those doors lock or even unlock if you need them unlocked in a case. Contact sensors are an additional way to verify not only if doors are closed through those door locks, but then you have the ability to add them to windows so that you can see if windows are open or closed in your home. Now these can get pretty expensive if you wanted to add them to every single window in your home. What I usually encourage people to do is worry about about the main level of your home. So if you have a two-story home like I do, you just need to put them on the downstairs windows because who's really gonna come with a ladder to rob your house? It's possible, but I mean, it's a lot less likely if that's the case. But what this does for us is it shows us when a window or door is open. If one of those windows or doors open during the time that your home is armed, it will set off the sensors and trip the alarm system. It lets you know that a window or door has been opened when the alarm motion sensors are the next step beyond contact sensors. Maybe somehow somebody gets inside the home and doesn't trip those sensors. Maybe they broke a window so they didn't have to actually open it. The motion sensors are going to tell you when something is moving around inside your home. This runs into a little bit of a problem with animals if you have them because sometimes the alarm will trip with animals. The alarm will trip with animals sometimes. A way to combat this is through upgrading to present sensors over motion sensors. Present sensors have the ability to track whether they're humans versus animals. Some motion sensors can do this because it's tracking if something is super, super low to the ground, basically crawling, that it determines it's not a human and it's actually an animal. What's also really great about motion sensors is you can determine where somebody's at in your home. If your alarm's going off, you can check your motion sensors and see which one is actually detecting motion at that time. So you can see that somebody might be in the living room versus the kitchen, the dining room, or maybe even the entryway or your garage. So motion sensors are a great add to your smart home because they tell you where somebody's at inside your home. Both the contact sensors and motion sensors are something that double from the basics of a smart home and can be built upon to add security features as well. So if you've already done the basics of a smart home, you can then utilize these same sensors. They can also trigger your alarm sensors. Now for the alarm pad or the smart device that is used to control the alarm system. Some just come with a keypad so you can put your code in and arm or disarm your home. Others come with a more fancy version that is an actual full-blown screen and touch screen that gives you the ability to remotely monitor your cameras as well as which devices are open doors or locks are open at that time when you're locking your home or you're trying to disarm your home. What's interesting though is most of these systems are going to come with a smart app attached to it. So sometimes the on the wall control panel is almost unnecessary. If you're making the choice to whether purchase one, you can sometimes wait a little bit later to purchase this item instead of purchasing it up front. Because a lot of times you can arm the home through the app versus a physical control panel on the wall. Interior and exterior cameras. A lot of people are really finicky about interior cameras because they don't like watching people in their home, but I strongly encourage you to have them. I have small children and there's plenty of times where my wife or, and I need to step outside the room, but we have the ability to pull up our cameras remotely where our children might be in a specific room and we can monitor them while we're doing something else in a different room. There's also detections in there for crying or falling so that if one of those two things happens, we're going to get that notification. If for some reason your home did get broken into, you can not only see them with the motion sensors where they're at, you can physically see the recording of what's happening live a lot of times. You also have recording so that 
if something were to happen, you can take that footage and hand it to the authorities that be. There's so many different reasons why interior cameras do work. We're going to have a whole video dedicated specifically to interior and exterior cameras. I don't need to explain too much about exterior cameras, but there's so many different options. You have floodlight cameras, you have regular cameras, you also have your video doorbell camera. So you're going to want to map out where your cameras are going to need to go on the exterior and interior of your home so that they can cover the most amount of space because these cameras can get very expensive. Depending on which cameras you get, you can go with wired ones that are on a closed loop recording, or you can go with unwired ones that just run off of battery or some even nowadays have a solar panel attached so that they can continuously charge and you're not having to take them down. I use Eufy cameras, E-U-F-Y, Eufy cameras. And once a year, I have to take them down and recharge them because I don't have the solar panel attached. These are devices that again can be purchased at the beginning of your smart home or towards the end or anywhere in between. What I've done with my cameras is I purchased the minimal amount just to get some coverage. I wanted to see the entrance of my home as well as the back of my home. I do need a couple more cameras on the sides of my home, but I can always purchase those down the road. So plan out what works best for you and purchase only just enough cameras that you need or all of them at once if you have the potential couple thousand dollars it might take to buy all those cameras. Now garage door openers. I mentioned in a previous video how important it is to have garage door openers and how useful they can be. I'll link the video on the screen for you to take a moment to go back and watch those. The reason why they're in a smart security system is because you have the ability to remotely control your garage. This can be done with a contact sensor so you know whether that door, that garage door is open or closed, but you don't have the ability to close it if it's open. You can also set up automations to automatically close it if it's open. As I said, I have a whole video around this, so we're gonna keep it pretty short with a smart garage door opener. The last three devices are all grouped together that are also in a video I've already done. That was the previous video, and this is smoke, carbon monoxide, and leak detectors. These are more of a home monitoring versus a home security style device, but I still encourage you to get them because if you have a carbon monoxide or smoke problem, you can then remotely unlock your home so authorities can get in and save any animals or anybody that is in the home at that time, but also gives you that peace of mind remote monitoring of your home. So if your home ever did go up in flames when you're away, you're going to get a notification and not just a call from a neighbor. Just a reminder, this is by no means a you must purchase in this order. These are just the way that I typically see the pre-packaged companies build out the devices and which way they order them. So they're more basic level devices. They're more basic level packages tend to include the first few devices I mentioned in the more advanced high-end packages, they tend to have all the devices at the end that I've mentioned. We are going to go deep into each of these individual devices. We're going to look at some different brands and determine which ones are better. The next video is going to be entirely on the difference between companies, pre-packages, and DIYing your smart home. What are the pros? What are the cons of a smart security system versus those prepackaged ones? I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. I thank you guys so much for watching it. I absolutely love doing this. So if you love this as well, hit the like button down below. Don't forget to subscribe, share this with a friend who you think needs a smart security system as well. Don't forget to go watch all the previous videos so you can be up to date with what's happening on this channel. Thank you guys again for watching it. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.